What's going on, everyone? Daniel here, and welcome to my Stranger Things spoiler review for Season 1, Episode 5, titled The Flea and the Acrobat. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm very horrible. I'm behind. I'm behind. It's been, like, over a, oh, about a year since this episode's been out, and I'm barely reviewing it now while we're, like, 40 days away from Season 2. I'm sorry. Um, I binge watch shows all the time, and I started watching Stranger Things about a week after it released, but I'm sorry I didn't finish eight episodes uh, that fast, because over time, about two days ago, I barely finished episode eight. I'm horrible. I am behind on so many things. Life just happened to me, so uh, please excuse me for those who watch. I really do appreciate it. I, I want to give my thoughts out on this episode and about this amazing show. Uh, at Duffer Brothers, just, I'm, I'm very excited for season two, and I know I have to get this out uh, beforehand, so, uh, anyway, this should have been done a very long time ago, but but we're, get, we're getting it done right now, we're about to do it right now, uh, so anyway, it should take me about two minutes to recap it, refresh your brain, and then give you the pros, cons, and final score, thank you guys again, let's go. So we begin the episode with Hopper in Hawkins' laboratory, he ends up getting caught, and he wakes up back home. Uh, there he is paranoid. He knows that he, he he knows he was at Hawkins' lab and that he was caught and and uh, he remembers so how you know he he now he must be on a watch list somehow. He ends up tearing through everything in his house, inch by inch everywhere, tearing everything up, looking for a wire, and he eventually does find a wire in the lights. Uh, now, he ends up telling Joyce that she was right, that something is fishy and the government is on it. Lonnie is being a dick, uh, as usual. Lonnie the dick, the small dick. Uh, he is kicked out, rightfully so. Nancy and Jonathan go looking in the woods for the Demogorgon. Barb, where are you? They're looking for Barb. But they don't <laughs> oh, man. Barb is long gone, sweetie. I'm sorry. Uh, she's, she's, just, she's just gone. I mean... I mean, let's go study, Nancy. Let's go study. Oh, I don't want to be at this party. Let's go study math. It's not a big loss, honestly. It really isn't. Trust me. Uh, so anyway, there's uh, Nancy ends up going through a portal and she's stuck there in the Upside Down world for the time being. Uh, the kids are looking for a portal to the Upside Down as well. And Eleven tries to stop them. She ends up hurting Lucas and Eleven disappears. Now on to the pros, cons, and final score. I just think that Hopper is a badass. Hopper is one of my favorite characters. Uh, as as everybody, I just love every character um, besides Lonnie or Barb. Uh, nothing wrong with Barb, but I, again, we didn't have much screen time with her, but either way, Barb, where's Barb? My, my, my boy, just get to Will. Let's just get Will back, okay? We'll worry about Barb in season seven, okay? Um, she's, she's out there somewhere, not really. Uh, but ho uh, Hopper, everything, and I I'm glad he they put that in there, searching for uh, searching for if they tapped, uh, there's a wire that they're listening to him or something, because it made me a little paranoid, and I'm like, oh my god, the government could just hide anything. Is it in my TV? Is it in my PlayStation? I is it in me? I mean, are they listening to me right now while I'm doing this review? It just got me so freaking paranoid, and I'm glad the Duffer Brothers put that in there. And It was a few minutes of a scene of him just tearing everything apart, breaking things, flipping things. It's some hard work, like, hey, we're going to film you doing this all day. Have fun with it. Just go at it. Just break this thing. Uh, so that must have been both fun and excruciating to film. As always for Stranger Things, the cinematography, the directing, the quality, the CGI effects, the practical effects, all of it is is absolutely amazing to watch. Uh, Duffer Brothers and their team do it again, man, especially writing-wise and where these characters go. Every episode, they, they, they move forward. They just don't stay in one place. They're always constantly moving, and the character development is, is, is some of the best. Especially Nancy and Jonathan, man. I'm glad that they finally got to start talking to each other, and they're teaming up, and he was the last one basically to see Barb, and now they're... They're going to end up looking for Barb, basically, and that's kind of where I see their their love interest starting to build, and uh, Jonathan going to give them that mm -hmm letter, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's very nice, and, and, and it's, it's cool to see that Barb did something right. 
Barb brought these two together, and that is that's that's cute. So thank you, Barb, for bringing a relationship together. I shipped them off. Go off to sea. Tell Steve the iceberg ends up sinking the ship now. That's some pretty scary stuff, the whole portal in the tree. Nancy, if you see a big hole in a tree and it's like monstrous, like maybe don't go in there. I, I know you're curious, but don't don't go fist first into a hole because you don't know what's on the other side. It's just gonna be a bunch of shit. So just a, uh, just a thought, penny for your thoughts. Don't go into portals and trees. Make sure you have Jonathan with you next time. Because that, that's some scary stuff, especially the beginning of the next episode uh, with the Demogorgon or Demigorgon. Uh, I call him Demogorgon. I'm pretty sure that's the right term there. Uh, so now on to the cons. I guess the real thing that I didn't like about this episode, and I thought the weaker part of it, was really with the kids in Eleven. And honestly, those were the stronger parts. Oh, there were All of them were strong parts, but this one, really, I was getting more bored with the kids in Eleven, in a sense. And I think it's cute interactions, very kiddly. And then, and then it's just Eleven. They got angry at Eleven, and then Lucas gets hurt. But, I mean, he got thrown around. You could have killed him! Like, he's still alive, though, is he not? If I wanted him dead, he'd be dead. Trust me on that. I could have made his brain explode. Um, but seriously, uh, I don't know. I just, I wasn't digging really the scenes at the end where it just, it felt like there wasn't that need for the fighting in a sense. She could have just said, hey, stop. Don't. This is very bad. They were fighting against Eleven, and they want to find Will, but it's like, Will's been gone for a few weeks already. Calm down. You'll find him. Find him tomorrow. Not today. It's okay. It's almost dark. Get back home. Um, because Pennywise, the dancing clown, has him. So, basically, that and Lonnie, um, because I think this is like the last time Lonnie shows up in the, in the series. He only shows up like two times, and this is basically the last time. And I get maybe he'll be a bigger part in the next season. I don't know. But it's like Lonnie basically is just kind of like, eh, he's been a dick. He's usually the dick father. What do you expect? Uh, it was a good acting scene. Very good acting scene. But still, it's just kind of like, eh, could do without, could do, could do without, could live with it, can't live with it, you know, sort of thing. Anyway, I'm going to give this episode of Stranger Things, season one, episode five, a B+. Plus. I thought it was a really good episode. Not great again. It has its little downs. has its more ups, definitely, for sure. Uh, but then again, it's still a very enjoyable episode. And uh, it, it gets even more better the next few episodes. So thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, share, and hit that subscribe button if you feel so. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.